Greetings fellow learners, now before we get into this fantastical world of fine tuning, I have a thought provoking question for you. Do you think AI has peaked in its capabilities or is there still more to come? Now in my case, while I do think that AI is sometimes hyped for the wrong reasons, I am cautiously optimistic. And I do think that there is scope for AI to get better at learning. And hopefully we were going to reach a state where AI is going to be more performant while also being safe to use. But that's my take. Now, turning this question over to you, do you think that AI has peaked in its capabilities or is there still more to come? Comment your thoughts down below and I would love to hear them. Now this video is going to be divided into a few passes where we're going to illustrate the what's, the why's, and the how's of parameter efficient fine tuning. So let's get to it. In order to explain why parameter efficient fine tuning exists, I'm going to rewind the clock and try to get an explanation from the timeline of NLP progress so that we can see why it exists. So let's start with recurrent neural networks. Recurrent neural networks in around 2016 were the state of the art for language problems and specifically sequence to sequence problems. Sequences are an ordered set of tokens. So we would provide, for example, if we wanted to train it for language modeling, we would sequentially pass in some tokens and it would generate the next set of tokens. This is language modeling. Now, an issue with this, though, is that data processing is sequential. You have to pass in words one at a time. And because they are sequential, they don't make use of modern GPUs very well. Another issue is that training is very slow. And it's so slow that it uses a truncated version of backpropagation in order to train recurrent neural networks. Now, in order to solve these issues, we have the transformer neural network that was introduced. These transformer neural networks are encoder-decoder architectures that make use of attention. Now, an example of like how it would solve language modeling is that we pass in all of the input words to the encoder simultaneously. The encoder will generate vectors for each word that has some meaning encoded into it. So this is I love going. These are then passed into the decoder along with the contextual words in order to generate the next words one at a time. Now, a pro of this architecture is that the input can be processed in parallel and hence can make use of GPUs. Now, a con here is that every task requires a lot of data for training if we want to train it from scratch. So we saw it for language modeling, but if you wanted to train it for question answering, for example, you need a lot of data from scratch. So how do we deal with this data problem? I'll give you a second to guess. That's right, you guessed it, it's transfer learning. So transfer learning involves taking an untrained model and we're going to train it on a baseline language task. In this case, it's going to be language modeling where we are going to feed it multiple examples in order to finally train this model. And so this model now becomes a pre-trained model on language modeling. Next, we take this pre-trained model and we're going to fine tune it on a specific task. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fine tune it on question answering. So we'll feed it a question and it will generate a response to said question. And we're gonna feed it multiple examples until the model is finally fine tuned to answer questions. And this kind of pre-training and fine-tuning architecture using transfer learning is the basis for language models today, including BERT. So we have a pre-training phase where the model is trained on mass language modeling, where it's predicting words in between the sentence instead of the next word. And also next sentence prediction, which is predicting given two sentences, does sentence B follow sentence A? And then once this model is trained, the model has weights. These are then fine-tuned on specific tasks, like, for example, question answering. This is also used in ChatGPT, where we have a pre-trained language model, which is then performing supervised fine-tuning on question answering so that it can better answer questions. 
Now, the pros of fine tuning are that it requires less data than training a model from scratch, which is great. Now, the cons here are that it is time consuming to train and expensive to train as LLMs are getting larger. So every single fine tuning task that you have, you need to store all the model parameters again and again, which is a lot of storage and it can take a lot of time to train. And then we have an issue of catastrophic forgetting, which can lead to overfitting and catastrophic forgetting is when the model, when it is being fine tuned, it's going to update all of its parameters such that it kind of forgets what it has learned during the pre-training phase. Now, both of these issues are caused by the fact that all model parameters are trainable during the fine tuning phase. So how do we deal with the fact that all model parameters are trainable during the fine tuning phase? That's right, you guessed it, parameter efficient fine tuning. The parameter efficient fine tuning taken from a paper that it is an effective solution that reduces the number of fine tuning parameters and memory usage while achieving comparable performance to full fine tuning. So this is what parameter efficient fine tuning does. And I hope the historical context also provided more context as to why it exists. Quiz time. It's that time of video again. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. Parameter efficient fine tuning is a set of techniques, A, to ensure a model does not overfit during fine tuning, B, to reduce the number of trainable parameters during fine tuning, C, to increase the model performance during fine tuning, or D, to decrease the model training time during pre-training. I'll give you a few seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is B, but can you tell me why? Give your reason down in the comments below and let's have a discussion. And if you think I do deserve it at this point, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. Now that's gonna do it for quiz one and pass one of this explanation, but keep paying attention because I will be back to quiz you. In this pass, let's go through an implementation of how exactly parameter efficient fine tuning is implemented. So, this here is the architecture of the transformer neural network that we took a look at previously. So I want you to just pay attention to this encoder architecture over here, where we have a multi-head attention, some layer normalization, feed forward networks, and also a bunch of skip connections. Now what we're gonna do is take the entire transformer layer and we're going to interject two adapter layers per task. And these adapter layers over here are going to have an architecture that's going to be a multi-layer perceptron type architecture. Essentially, it's just two feed forward layers. Now, the top layers and the bottom layers here are just gonna be D neurons. Value of D is just going to be the internal representation of words or just general tokens in the transformer layer. So for example, in BERT large, this could be 1024. And there is going to be a bottleneck layer here, which is M. It's gonna be a lot less than D. This could be like 8, 64, 256, or something like that. And overall, the total number of parameters right here is going to be 2MD plus M plus D. And if you wanna see like how exactly this comes about, it's because for M layer of neurons and this D layer of neurons here, we're going to have M times D number of weights. So that's MD weights here. Similarly, for this up projection, we're going to have MD weights over here too. So that's gonna be two MD weights. That's how you get the first term. But we also have biases. So over here, we're going to have, like you can imagine there's going to be like a bias neuron that's going to be attached to every one of the M neurons. So that's gonna give M more weights, hence plus M. Similarly, there's going to be a bias over here, which is going to be attached to all of the D neurons over here. And hence, we have D more weights, hence D. And that's how we end up with 2MD plus M plus D additional parameters. 
And all of these parameters are going to be trainable parameters that we introduce when we want to introduce, like let's say we want to train this model on question answering. And it's going to be repeated twice. That's just for one adapter, but we have two such adapters here. So I hope you can see how the setup looks now, architecturally speaking. Now that you know how these adapters look, let's actually try to see this in action. So let's just say without any adapters, we have the BERT architecture, which we will initially start pre-training on mass language modeling. Mass language modeling means that we're going to predict the words in between the sentence, kind of like filling in the blanks. So if the input is I love blank to the blank, the output could be going and park right here. So we'll train it on mass language modeling and also pre-train it on next sentence prediction. Given two sentences like I love toys and the sky is blue, the model is going to determine, yes, sentence two follows sentence one or no, sentence two does not follow sentence one in a semantic sense. In this case, we're gonna say it's, it's false because these two do not follow each other. Now, once the model is pre-trained on these two tasks, we are then going to fine tune BERT with full fine tuning. And what this entails is, let's say we are fine tuning BERT on the question answering objective. We will pass in a question and we will also pass in the label, which is going to be the answer to this question. And then once it looks at, you know, the forward pass, it will generate a response. But then in the backward pass, we are going to perform back propagation, which is going to flow through the entire network, gradients propagate through the network, and it will also update every single weight that exists in the network. Now, the issue with this is that all parameters during the back propagation phase now need to be stored. So in this case of like BERT large, where we are fine tuning on question answering, we have like 345 million parameters in BERT. All 345 million parameters when we fine tune on question answering now need to be stored somewhere. And this can take up a lot of storage, especially for very large language models with like billions or trillions of parameters. Now, again, let's say that we also want to fine tune BERT on another task, which is sentiment analysis. So we'll take our pre-trained BERT, and then we are going to say the movie was enjoyable. And then the sentiment in this case is positive. So that's how the training data looks. So we'll have a forward pass where we can pass this in, data flows through. And then in the backward pass, once again, all of the weights are going to be updated. And so we have 345 million new parameters that need to be stored somewhere else. So every time we have a new task, all of these parameters are going to be updated and need to be stored somewhere, right? And this can take up a lot of space. And also for context, this is like a nice chart which shows a bunch of language models along with circles with, you know, the size of the circle indicates how many parameters or how big it is. You can see that BERT over here is like teeny tiny with 300 million parameters. We have GPT-2 with 1.5 billion parameters, GPT-3 with 175 billion parameters. And then you have like some of these very large language models which have over a trillion parameters in them. So you can imagine that these like very large language models for every single time that we want to train a specific task, it's going to take terabytes of data just to fine tune on one task. And this means that only some of the biggest players and the biggest companies can really only fine tune these models. And we want to make AI more accessible to everyone to fine tune. So now that we took a look at how BERT is fine tuned, let's actually take a look at how BERT is fine tuned with an adapter. So first of all, BERT is already pre-trained without adapters on mass language modeling and next sentence prediction. We are then going to add these adapters here. So this is like basically BERT with adapters. We have two adapters per transformer layer. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fine tune this on question answering. So let's just say we feed in the question, we're gonna also feed in the label, and then we're going to train the model. And in doing so, in the forward pass, everything is gonna flow just fine, but in the backward pass, we are going to freeze the weights of every single 
layer here except for the adapter layers themselves. So when I say freeze these layers, it means that during the back propagation step, the gradients are still going to be calculated, but they're not really going to update these weights. So any kind of update in the weights in the attention layers, the layer normalizations, the feed forward layers, none of them are going to be updated. It's only the adapter layers that we see here have their weights that are going to be updated. And because only the adapter weights are updated during the back propagation, only these adapter weights need to be stored. And these adapter weights, like we calculated before, is not really that large. And so if we wanted to, let's say, train or fine tune on another task, first we can replace these adapters so that it's a fresh start after pre-training the language model. And then when we fine tune them, we can fine tune it on sentiment analysis, passing in the data and the labels. We have the forward pass as it occurs as usual. And in the backward pass, once again, the model layers are frozen. The gradients do propagate in the backward direction, but no weights are updated except for these adapter weights. And because only adapter weights are updated during the back prop, only the adapter weights need to be stored. And so I hope you have a clearer picture on how these adapters look and how they can actually reduce the number of stored parameters for every fine-tuned task. Quiz time. It's that time of video again. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. For a task, full fine-tuning increases the trainable model parameters typically by around A, 1%, B, 20%, C, 100%, or D, 200%? I'll give you a few seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is C, but can you tell me why? Comment your reasoning down below and let's have a discussion. And that's going to do it for quiz two and pass two of this explanation, but keep paying attention because I will be back to quiz you. Now that we looked at how fine tuning with these adapters work, let's actually compute what the savings really is in some quantified way. In order to do that, we are going to use BERT large as an example. So in BERT large, we have 345 million or so trainable parameters. Now, the number of trainable parameters in full fine tuning per task is going to be 345 million because all of the parameters are going to be updated when we fine tune on a specific task. But what is the number of training parameters, trainable parameters in parameter efficient fine tuning, or at least this version of parameter efficient fine tuning that we've discussed in the video? Well, let's actually try calculating this. So the number of parameters per adapter is going to be 2MD plus M plus D, like we discussed previously in this adapter. And in this case, we can take M, which is the bottleneck layer, let it be of size 64. That's typically some number that is around the ballpark that's chosen. Now, D is going to be 1,024 in the BERT large case, and 1,024 is the number of dimensions of the internal vectors of BERT large. So this means that every word or every token is typically represented in BERT large by 1,024 dimensions, and these dimensions have to match with those dimensions for it to flow sequentially in the network. So hence, we have 1,024. So plugging those numbers into this equation, we'll get 132,160 parameters per adapter. But we know that for BERT large, we have two adapters per transformer layer, and BERT large has 24 such transformer layers that are stacked sequentially. And so this ends up with like the number of trainable parameters for a given fine tuning task is gonna be around 6.34 million. So, Plugging this number here, you can see that instead of training 345 million parameters, we are only training 6.34 million. And this means it's only 1.8% of all of these parameters. So if you divide these two numbers, which is a huge reduction in how much storage space is required for fine tuning multiple tasks. 
Now, if we want to get a better sense of even more numbers and exactly how performance looks, this table over here will show the performance of BERT large with and without the adapters. So for example, if we have BERT large, the total number of tasks that we're training on is nine. This is the glue benchmark. Glue is like a, a benchmark for NLP tasks so that we can compare multiple models by using the same core metrics and sets of data. What's really cool is here is that even with the adaptive approaches, we are achieving performances that are almost as close as the full fine tuning with using only a fraction, like 2.1% of the total number of parameters or 3.6% of the total parameters instead of adding 100% parameters per task. So that shows great savings here. I also wanna make it clear that the version of parameter efficient fine tuning that we described currently in this video was introduced back in 2019. And it sprouted a bunch of other parameter efficient fine tuning methods that you can see over here that can be divided into many categories. Quiz time. Ooh, this is going to be a fun one. Now for a task, parameter efficient fine tuning increases the trainable model parameters typically by around A, 1%, B, 20%, C, 100%, or D, 200%. I'll give you a few seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is A, but can you tell me why? Comment your reasoning down below and let's have a discussion. And if you think I do deserve it at this point, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. And that's going to do it for quiz three and pass three of this explanation. But before we go, let's generate a summary. Now, as a summary, we first saw how fine tuning came about, but also its cons in the sense that it's pretty time consuming and expensive to train as LLMs have gotten larger and also has the problem of catastrophic forgetting. And both of these are linked to the fact that all model parameters are trainable during the fine tuning phase. And one way to solve this is using parameter efficient fine tuning, which reduces the number of fine tuning parameters and memory usage while achieving comparable performance to full fine tuning. We then saw how we can add adapter layers to a BERT network in order to just fine tune the model while only needing to store the adapter weights. And these weights are a very small percentage of the total number of weights that we would see in full fine tuning. And while the fine tuning approach we described was just the first one that came out in 2019, there have been many others that have also come out, which we can take a look at in a future video. But regardless, I'll link all of these resources down in the description below so that you can check them out. Now, thank you all so much. So thank you all so much. That's all that we have for today. And if you think I do deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like. It'll help me out a lot. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.